Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Joel Rosen. I am an adrenal burnout recovery expert and I wanna welcome you back to another edition of your adrenal fix. Today, this is one of the most important videos that I've produced so far because I wanna to talk to you today about the relationship between thyroid problems and adrenal problems. So if you suffer with fatigue, you're cold all the time, you can't lose weight, you have brain fog, you have gastrointestinal dysfunction, you're losing your hair, your skin is dry, you're bloated, you just don't feel good, then chances are you have a thyroid problem. But chances are you have an adrenal problem. And that's the underlining theme of this presentation today is if you have a thyroid problem and you've never been told or your doctor has never looked at your adrenals, then you've been mismanaged. If you have an adrenal problem and your doctor has never looked at your thyroid, then you've been mismanaged. So let's clear up a little bit of the confusion and let's give you a little insight on what the relationship is and most importantly, what you can do to try, try to get your life back. So this is a normal thyroid metabolism. Basically in the brain, we have the hypothalamus, which is a central con control station. It senses changes in the body. When it senses a stress response or a need to produce energy or to warm up because you're cold, whatever it may be, uh, it will send a message to the pituitary gland. And so the hypothalamus sends a message to the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland then just sends a message to the thyroid. And that thyroid stimulating hormone or TSH is what pretty much everyone knows, and it's unfortunately one of the only uh, markers that doctors look at, and it's very, very incomplete. But let's explain it anyways. So your thyroid gets TSH released from the pituitary, and that tells the thyroid, hey thyroid, you gotta kick it up a notch, it's time to do your work. When the thyroid starts to kick it up a notch, it produces two types of hormones, T4 and T3. 93% of the actual production is T4, and that's the inactive form. The example I like to use is imagine you're making coffee in the morning, and you need to put the uh, ground up coffee bean in the coffee machine. T4 would be the actual coffee bean. You're not going to put that bean into the coffee machine, and you're going to produce a nice coffee. You have to grind it up into a usable form. That's what T3 is. And the grinding up process takes place in the liver, 60%, takes place in the peripheral tissue, and takes place in the gut. And so when T4 gets converted to T3, we have an enzyme called 5-diodinase. And that enzyme is inhibited by cortisol. So what does that mean? That means when we're stressed out, and we don't keep our blood sugar stable throughout the day, or we have a low-grade infection, or we have food sensitivities, or we have an emotional stressor, or we have an environmental toxin, or we have a toxic job, whatever it may be, that's gonna cause us to release cortisol. And cortisol is gonna settle inflammation and stabilize blood sugar and deal with the stressor. That's what your adrenal glands do. However, when you constantly secrete cortisol because of your stressors all the time, you're, 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 you're minimizing the conversion of the active hormone of T4 into T3. And so what happens is you're, you feel tired, you can't bounce back, you don't have energy in the morning, you have brain fog, you're not able to lose weight, you may be going to the gym, you're not showing any effects. And meanwhile, no one's told you about this relationship and they've only looked at your TSH and your TSH may look normal, However, it's not converting from the coffee bean into the ground up form. So that's a huge problem. Another relationship is the mechanism or the feedback mechanism. And so let's explain that a little bit. Imagine you're in your hot house and it gets hot and hot and eventually the thermostat senses the change in temperature in the ambient air and it's like, okay, we gotta kick in this, the air to make it cooler. And so it does and everyone's happy, it's cold. But eventually what happens is the mechanism, the feedback mechanism gets broken. And so it gets hotter in the room and then the thermostat doesn't sense it and it doesn't, it doesn't spit out the cold air. Imagine though, here's the thing, is that thermostat for the adrenal glands is also the same thermostat for the thyroid. So the thermostat is the hypothalamus and the pituitary. So the hypothalamus senses the, the, the body and it senses what's going on and it tells the pituitary to kick in the cold air. And that's when everyone's happy. 
But what happens is over time, because cortisol is constantly being demanded, hey, you got to produce, uh, uh, you got to produce inflammatory, uh, anti-inflammatory um, hormones to settle inflammation. You got to deal with your stress. You got to deal with your food sensitivity. You got to deal with blood sugar. Eventually, that feedback mechanism gets broken, and it affects when the thyroid gets released too. So there's two ways, and there's actually a couple more ways. But suffice to say, if your cortisol levels are high because of constant stress, then your T3 active hormone levels are ultimately going to be low. So what is the solution? Well, the solution number one is to identify your thyroid and identify your adrenals by proper testing. Thyroid, you don't just take T4 or TSH and measure those. You got to measure if there's thyroid antibodies, you got to measure T4, T3, total T4, total T3, reverse T3, free thyroxine index. There's all those markers, seven markers that you have to identify. And every time I see a patient coming in with a thyroid problem, all I see is T4 and they're on Synthroid or Armor and they haven't even been worked up properly. Also, you should have your adrenal saliva test done. Not a blood test because that's only going to show you one marker in the morning. It's not going to tell you how your total cortisol output is throughout the entire day. If it goes from low to high or high to low, or is it high across the board? Is it low across the board? What kind of stage are you in the adaptation stage? Are you in a chronic stress response? Are you in an acute stress response? Are you in a maladaptive stress response? And then once you know these things, then you can go after the sources of the problem and try to fix maybe the blood sugar is not stable. Maybe you have a low-grade infection. Maybe you have a parasite. Maybe you have a heavy metal toxicity. Maybe you have a toxic job and a toxic marriage. And all of these stressors need to be identified. Then you can go on some adaptogenic herbs, ashwagandha, rhodiola, holy basil, ginseng. Um, there's even some great thyroid support supplements that are out there. But suffice to say, you got to figure out the entire equation. So hopefully you enjoyed this version of your adrenal fix. My name is Dr. Joel Rosen. Uh, if you like this video, then just please give me a thumbs up or a share or a comment. And be sure to check out my, my blog. It's underneath here. It's at, um, I believe it's your adrenal sorry it's adrenal fatigue society and uh, i look forward to helping you in your recovery of your adrenal fatigue nightmare thank you so much